you could join us yet again on the Strange Acts of God. My name is Nalongo Uechuku, and I'm coming to you from Streams of Joy International, the home of the new season's prophetic prayers and declarations, more popularly known as NSPPD. In Streams of Joy International and on NSPPD, we are unapologetic in our belief and in our resolve that what God cannot do does not exist. Ah, did you see the mind-blowing testimonies that were aired on the NSPPD platform in the course of the week? Amazing. I can tell you for free, it has been two years, but there's no getting familiar with the God of the NSPPD fire altar. We come here every day and every day we are left marveled and in awe at the operations of his mighty, mighty hands. In just a minute, we're going to be looking at three of those mind-blowing testimonies that we saw in the course of the week. Right now will be a great time to click on the share button if you are yet to do so. I'm not here by myself. Today, I am joined by the ever-fireful, super, super insightful Pastor Dr. Chika Ibeneme. She is a consultant pediatrician and a pastor at Streams of Joy International. And she's going to be putting us through the testimonies, our lineup of testimonies today. Pastor Dr. Chika, welcome back to the Strange Acts of God. Thank you so much, Nalong. I'm really excited to be here once again. We have missed you so, so, so much. It's I've also missed the program. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be back here again yes. to talk about the Strange Acts of God. Yes, yes. Welcome. Thank Our you. first testimony comes all the way from Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Our testifier testifies of having been healed of multiple breast lumps. Watch this and we'll be right back. No do does not exist. Indeed, what God cannot do does not exist. Hallelujah. I'm giving this testimony from you, Akwai Boom State in Nigeria. For the past um, a decade and a half, I've been inflicted with multiple breast lumps. As in multiple breast lumps, as in not just two or two breast lumps, but five to six breast lumps in each breast, not just in one breast. And I more or less stumbled upon an NSPPD platform on Facebook last year, February. And I was like, oh, this must be the platform that God is going to use to heal me. So I keyed into all the prayers, the testimonies. I was all, I was like, I was overwhelmed by the awesome healings that was going on. And I said, if God can bring back the dead, if God can heal cancer, if God can make one who was crippled to walk. If God can make a short leg to grow back its length in a split second, then what is breast lumps? This is like the least that God can do. And yet, of course, the adversary will come in to give doubts and to discourage you because it's, it, it seemed like my own healing was prolonged. But I kept on. I kept on praying on the altar of um, fire. I kept on um, following the testimonies and all that. Then the, these breast lumps, they were not just existing. In two, two years ago, uh, roughly two years ago, they started getting um, bigger and then very, very painful, as in excru excruciating pains. I, I, sometimes at night I will wake up in pains. I can't lie with my face down, but I did not give up. I just said, God, I know you can do this. There were several um, episodes of the of the, on the altar of fire where Pastor Jerry will say, wherever you have issues, challenges, lay your hands. I will lay my hands on both breasts, and, but I, I wasn't, it seemed as if it wasn't working for me. I knew that the devil was only trying to play tricks on, on my mind, but I kept on going. I kept on, anytime he mentioned the solution of breast lumps, I will key into it, I'll say, yes, this is mine, this is mine. I don't care when it's going to happen, but I know that this is my own testimony. And whenever it's going to happen, I will give this testimony. Now, February, to the glory of God, February this year, when these breast lumps disappeared, it was incredible. I did not, that day, no, it wasn't even like the no, other days that um, breast lumps would be mentioned. They were, breast lumps were not mentioned, but it was just a healing and deliverance service day on the platform and God healed me. You know that healing that comes up and you don't even realize that you have been healed because I've taken my mind off it and I was just saying, God, I know you can do this and you can do it. 
at your own time. I woke up and found out that I was actually sleeping face down. I was sleeping with my chest. And I said, ah, is this, is this possible? I woke up, I started searching for the lumps and I did not find anything. There was no pain. For, for a month, I kept on searching. Virtually every day, I'll be searching. Is it true? Can this lump disappear just like that? I didn't take any drug. Nothing did I do. There was no more surgery. And we were proud to this. I'd had like two surgeries done on the breast. And one of them was more like a biopsy to, to find out if the lumps were cancerous. They said it wasn't cancerous. I said, yes, thank you, Jesus. But that's not enough. I can't go through this pain and these swellings and this discomfort. So I'm here to return all the glory back to God. The same God of yesterday, today and forever. The same God that brought, brought back the dead in the days of the apostles. That God is on this platform. He's healing and you and I can be people who are enjoying the healings and the deliverance from this platform. What God cannot do does not exist. What God cannot do does not exist. Hallelujah. Praise God. Testimony. Hallelujah. Amazing, Amazing testimony. testimony. I think what's unique about her testimony, because we've had testifiers that have testified about a lump disappearing, but what's very unique about hers is that this is not one lump, it's not two, it's about six it's lumps in one in breast. each breast. That's like somebody living with up to 12 yes. lumps. In your breast? In your breast. Up to 12. I've never wow. heard of this before. Wow. What is this condition? What is this condition? Wow. It's breast lump. <laughs> Why is someone having six, six lumps it's, at a time? I'm also surprised, honestly, because it's not very common. Mm. It's not very, even though it can occur, but it's very rare. Mm. Because when you talk about breast lump, it depends on what is causing, you know, the breast lump. Mm. Because it can actually be maybe... Neoplastic, that is the one we call, our, we call breast tumors or non-neoplastic. Okay. Like if it is non-neoplastic tumor or swelling in the breast, it may be maybe an inflammation. Mm. You know, some people, when they have their babies, they can have a mastitis. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, it can be maybe cysts in the breast. You know, these ones are the ones that are not due to an abnormal growth. Mm. But when you talk about an abnormal growth, in the breast. You're talking about neoplastic lesions. That's the one we call breast tumors. Mm. And these breast tumors can be benign tumors, the ones that will not spread, they are not cancerous, or they can become malignant tumors, the ones that can spread. That's the ones that we call breast cancers. Okay. So it actually depends on what is... But from her testimony, she said from the biopsy she did that it was not cancerous. Mm. And I think it may be the common type of breast lesion known as fibroadenoma. You okay. know, it is usually very common, especially in women of a uh, reproductive age. I don't know her age. If you're looking at her, you may place her I mean, at her about 40s, 40. Yeah. 40s. So women of, um, that are still in their reproductive age mm. can have that um, tumor called fibroadenoma. Yes, that one usually is single, not okay. even multiple. Okay. Although there have been reports that some people have seen up to three or four lumps, mm. you know, in each breast in people with fibroadenoma. There's also been some reports about more than two, more than three or four. But I tell you, it is not usually mm. Mm. common. What it, is common is when you have a single, a single lump. lump. A single yes, lump. Yes. So is there something that will predispose? Because you know she has had two surgeries in the past and it's reoccurrent and it's back again, six in each breast. Is there something that may predispose one to have multiple lumps at the same time? Well, um, it depends for every lump in the breast, you know, has a particular cause. Okay. There are some that hormonal changes and mm. I'm thinking it may be what is causing her own. There are some that yes. hormonal changes can actually predispose to. Okay. So, and for a woman of reproductive age, you know, they are prone to hormonal changes when you're menstruating, when you're ovulating, yes. one hormone coming or the other. So, hormonal changes have actually been implicated mm. in this. And mm, then some mm, people mm. also that have family history of breast lump mm. can actually come down with it. But as I said before, mm. it is mm. usually a rare occurrence. Rare occurrence. For, because even those that have family history, it may just be one lump. Mm. Maybe if your mother 
or your grandmother or your auntie or your sister have been diagnosed with breast lump before, mm. then the person can easily come down with breast lump. Mm. And then if you're also having um, maybe some um, other tumors in the body, maybe the uterus or the ovary, mm. some people can also have associated breast tumor. If mm. you're having a tumor already in the ovary or in the, because the same hormones, you know, have been implicated. So right. majorly is uh, mainly hormonal changes okay. for the ones that are not cancerous, okay. like in that fibroadenoma that I talked about. Yes. There's another one also that is called intraductal papillomata. You know, wow. in the <laughs> that's a lot of medical <laughs> jargon. But just talk. trying to talk about being occurring in the dots in the breast. Okay. You know, the breast is filled with a lot of dots. Yes. Where the breast milk flow yes. from. Yes. So when you have a lesion in those dots, intraductal papilloma, yes. those ones also have been associated with multiple, you know, lumps. But okay. it's usually rare. Okay. Most times, breast lumps are usually single or maybe two or three, mm, but not mm, for you mm. to have six lumps in each breast. Twelve total. Yes. Twelve total. So yes. can they dissolve on their own? Because I know she has had two surgeries in the past. So can breast lumps dissolve on their own? Um, depending on the cause. Okay. The benign ones, sometimes you may not really need to worry. You may mm. not need to bother. It can disappear. There has been a documentation that it can actually disappear. Okay. The, and these are about 80% of them are usually benign. Okay. So for those ones, you may not really need to do much. Mm. Although any doctor that is seeing a patient with breast lump will not just relax. Mm. At least, even if you don't do anything, you should do an excision or even excision biopsy mm. and take it to the lab and be sure that it is not cancerous. Mm. It is better done than just assuming that it is benign mm. because it's only when you take it to the lab for histology that you can say, okay, this is not a cancerous uh, mm. you know, tumor. So for those ones that are benign, mm. it's been documented that some of them, even without doing much, it can disappear on mm. its own. Mm -hmm. But if it is not benign, yes. most times you need surgery. Even the ones that are benign, it's safer yes. if it is removed surgically than just leaving it. Right. Because that something is benign does not does mean not that mean it will, one day it will forever. not undergo mm. a malignant change. Mm, so mm, the safest mm. thing to do for any breast tumor is just to excise it mm. and remove it. So yes. what's your medical opinion on this? 12 lumps, no surgery, no medication, dissolving, dissolving disappearing on its own. immediately mm. at the same time. At the same time, mm. all of them mm. are the same. And mm. even this woman, if you remember, she said she has had surgery before surgery like two past. times so and still it reoccurred swollen and painful painful swollen and painful, painful. and mm. then without surgery no surgery no surgery nothing and she did not tell us that she was on any medication because no. there are some medications actually that you can give you know some hormonal medications you can give that can help some of these women with long but this one no medication mm -mm. no surgery mm. she just woke up one morning mm. and discovered mm. that she could not lie down down she could lie with down. her chest, yes. you know, because, because yes. she said the discomfort alone. Mm. And that two years ago, it started increasing in size, in size. and then becoming more painful, painful. that yes. it was so discomforting. Mm. Only for her to just wake up one morning and discover that the, All gone. she kept on palpating. And for mm. months now, she has not noticed anything, mm. which means for me, this is just a God mm. showing himself. Mm. This is just mm. the hand of God. Mm. 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 All of them disappeared. That At she could not time. see even one, even one. multiple, mm. six mm. in one breast, six mm. on the other breast. Mm. I think this is just the hand of God. Mm. Why haven't they disappeared all this, all while? this while? It has been like 15 years. Yes, 15 years. 15 years mm. she had mm. this lump. And, and until she started praying. There to, to the point that she had to go and surgically remove, remove them, in the past. them in the past. So she has never had this where, you know, the lump just disappeared. disappeared this is the first time the this first is time is happening and she gave time even before this testament yes, to yes. see whether she's actually sure whether yes. these lumps have disappeared mm. i think this is just the hand of god it for 15 years god. she has mm. battled with love mm. you know getting to know that you even if it's benign but the discomfort and the, the discomfort. awareness that you have yes. multiple lumps yes. in your breast yes, yes, you yes. cannot just go and sleep over it mm -mm. you know it's something mm -mm. that is of worry because mm. you don't know if tomorrow they will tell you that it has become mm. Malignant, mm. cancerous, mm. and then just waking up one morning and noticing that the 12 of them 
her oh disappeared. Oh God, you know, I'm, I I love her faith. Yes. You know, they did the biopsy and she found out that the lumps, you know, she was cancer free. But even at that, she was not going to accept half measures. Half measures. No half measures. She's saying, what of the discomfort? Discomfort, what of the, what of the pain? I mean. So I'm not satisfied that you're not cancerous. I want you out of my go. body. Completely. You have to completely. Ah. No half measures. Mm, no you half just have measures. To no half measures. Go. And God healed her and perfected her perfected health. Perfected her health. Glory to God. Wow. Glory to God. Glory it's to amazing, God. Really. Amazing, testimony. amazing testimony. Our next testimony comes from Mrs. Deborah. She's testifying from New York City in the United States of America on behalf of her sister. Watch this. We'll be right back. What God cannot do does not exist. What God cannot do does not exist. Uh, my name is Deborah, and I'm calling from New York. Um, I'm giving this testimony on behalf of my little sister in Nigeria. She was sick, nigh unto death. She was rushed to the teaching hospital in Ikeja, almost lifeless. By the time they began to do blood work, they find out that her blood, uh, she, she lacks blood, she's anemic, and then her kidneys, one of them was swollen, one of them was shrunk and then they and her legs were swollen her stomach was swollen she cannot retain food she cannot eat and she was very very sick and when my little sister called me she was crying and i said oh my god what god cannot do does not exist so we three of us uh me and my other two other little sisters we began to put her on the platform and my other sisters did theirs in, New, in Nigeria and we were working very hard, praying very hard and telling God my mother died. I just buried her uh, December of uh, 2020 and I don't want to bury another person. And uh, it was a very serious issue. My little sister kept giving her communion in the hospital, praying for her and we kept praying here. I kept putting her name in the platform multiple times i just typed what was wrong with her and put it in, uh, in my uh, whatsapp and i copy it i kept putting it multiple times on the platform amen and as we continue that uh, they did the blood work and they find out that her blood creatinine was 500 this is where i circled it was 552 milligrams as against 1.20. So by the time we kept doing that, I took her pictures. I put her pictures on the on the on the phone while the prayers are praying. I put uh, her pictures for um, for mercy prayers, and I put her pictures also for uh, healing and deliverance. And my other sisters, they were doing the same thing praying for her, going to the hospital, praying for her, giving her communion. And, oh, God did wonders. When they went back, they, when they, they find out that her blood, blood creatinine is 552, the doctor ordered for immediate hemodialysis. So we kept praying, we kept praying. And then uh, the day she's supposed to do the, for the dialysis, my sister was supposed to go and make the payment. And I told her that, they, they decided to run the test again before the dialysis. And when they ran the test, they find out, look at it. It came down to 1.4. See where I circled it here? 1.4. From 552 to 1.4, Pastor Jerry. I could not believe it. Her legs uh, it was no longer swollen. Her stomach was no longer swollen. She began to eat something like a camu. And uh, her health began to do better. Her blood pressure began normal, became normal. Her blood sugar became normal. So pastor, everything became normal. Thank God, pastor. I just thank Jehovah Almighty for healing her and for giving us giving us the the opportunity to testify amen concerning her and today she's fine and discharged from the hospital and pastor jerry i i cannot quantify what you're doing and god is using you mightily all over the world i just want god to 
continue to bless you and uh, uh, strengthen you and give you the authority and the energy that you need to continue to press on in the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. wow. Oh my wow. God. Wow, amazing. Wow, this is amazing. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow. Um, she said, you know, the blood work, her sister's blood work yes. came out. One kidney swollen, one kidney shrunk. shrunk. One kidney was shrunken, one kidney was swollen. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, her legs were swollen and she was anemic. What are these symptoms indicative of? Even though, you know, because um, she's not a medical person, so yes. she's just talking. On, but listening to this testimony, you know that uh, this person was actually in kidney failure. Okay. Yes. Because the doctor had seen and yes. had recommended hemodialysis. Okay. And from all the features she talked about, mm. you know, I'm thinking once you get a shrunken kidney, yes. it's actually a chronic thing. Okay. So it's actually a chronic thing. Mm. And then she also talked about blood work showing that she was anemic. Anemic. Which is also showing a chronic kidney disease. Mm. Because before a kidney problem will give rise to anemia, Mm. It would have become chronic, mm. like uh, three months, six months, and right, all that. Right, you know, because right. of the erythropoietin, you know, a substance called erythropoietin that is produced in the kidney okay. that is supposed to act on the bone marrow and give it a signal to produce red blood cell. Right. So, because the kidney is not producing it, uh -huh. it usually gives rise to anemia. Okay. And she also talked about blood pressure being very, very high. high. Mm. So I'm thinking that this is um, her sister had been having chronic kidney disease and she did not know. Mm. Because most people will not know that they have a kidney problem mm. until it becomes so damaged, what we call stage four kidney failure. Mm. When the symptoms begin to manifest, right. most times the symptoms will not manifest yes. until more than half of the kidney is gone. Wow. That's when people will know. So maybe there was an acute insult, like an infection right. or something that triggered you know, mm. the symptoms. And then she was rushed to the hospital. And on doing the blood work, they just discovered wow. and with ultrasound that this lady was actually in kidney failure. Yes. And the doctor recommended immediate hemodialysis. So yes. that's what I think. She talked about creatinine levels being 552 milligrams, you know, and, you know, later subsequently it reduced to one. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, even looking critically at the, because I had to look critically at that lab result. Okay. So I actually saw that it was 552 micromoles. Micromoles, yes, not milligrams. Li not milligram. Okay. Milligram is really outrageous for you to have 500 and, you know, yes. and this is a milligram. Yes. And it dropped to one point. Maybe it as it may. Yes. It actually showed that this person was in kidney so failure. So 552 micromoles, what is that in milligrams? In milligram, it should be about 6 milligrams. Okay, about six yes, milligrams. Yes, yes, but the okay. normal actually should not be more than 1.5. Oh, right. Yes, right, the normal right. should not be. So six is still outrageous. Six is still very mm. outrageous. Okay. And I even looked at the urea, even though she did not mention it. Oh, right. But you know that I am a kidney yes, specialist. Yes, I know, that's your So specialty. I had to mm. critically look at the urea. Mm. It was way above normal. Mm. It was up to 200 and wow. something, you know, milligram per deal, which... If they did not do that dialysis, it's enough to even give an encephalopathy. Okay. The woman can even go into coma, yes. become unconscious because of that urea level. Okay. So it actually shows that the kidney was really in failure. Yes. The, the patient was actually in kidney failure. Mm. So creatinine was very high. Yes. Um, the urea was actually very high. Yes. Blood pressure was very high. Uh. Then the kidney was shrunken. Mm. Then there was anemia. Mm. So... Mm. For me, mm. that person needed immediate, immediate hemodialysis. Yes, 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 yes. So the doctor and was not returning fluid. Yes. And was which means was throwing up yes. and vomiting, showing that this patient was actually having uremic symptoms and needed that urea to be removed from the system through hemodialysis. Mm, mm, yes. Mm, mm, mm. So the doctor's recommendation was right. Was in right. Your, yes. In your was opinion. Right, in my opinion. Okay. So she didn't go ahead to have that dialysis. She didn't go ahead she to have it. She did not go ahead to have it. Because, you know, before doing it, they asked for another test to be done. Exactly. And, you know, all her levels had reversed. Everything went down because it's actually surprising. Maybe for blood work to come, I would have taken maybe... 12 hours or 24 right. hours for it to be out right. and then the doctor recommended hemodialysis. So we're looking at 
for me, maybe a space of 24 hours or 48 hours. Wow. Everything just yes. went down on its own mm. without mm. any intervention. Mm. Mm. Because mm. they brought it to the altar of mm. fire, started praying. Started praying she said the sister it. was her even feeding her with communion her. Yes. and all that. Mm. And that was how the dialysis was averted. Mm. And mind you, dialysis is not even the solution. Mm. Dialysis was just to remove those... Um, right, toxins so that, right, right. that may cause immediate death yes. in this individual. Yes. It's not that it's going to be the solution. Yes. But once you talk about chronic kidney disease, what will be the final solution will be kidney transplant. Wow. So I'm seeing wow. God just averting wow. a lot of processes wow. Wow. that this person would have gone wow. through. Wow. So it's actually the finger of God hmm. that without intervention, everything hmm. just hmm. normalized. Creatinine levels reversed. And that doesn't happen normally. It does just happen normally without hmm. it. Hmm. Except where it is just an acute problem. Yes. And then the acute insult has been removed. Hmm. Then gradually it will go down. Hmm. Not as sudden as it went down yes. in this case. Yes. So this for me, is just God having mercy wow. on this wow, uh, wow. individual. And her sister is out of the hospital, back out on of her the feet. hospital, back and her on kidneys her feet. are working just kidneys fine. Kidneys are working just ah. fine. No more anemia. No Everything more. corrected. Mm. The blood pressure normalized. Oh. It can only be the hand of God. Glory to God. Phenomenal, phenomenal testimony. Yes. Phenomenal testimony. At third and final testimony for today comes from a doctor and a minister of the gospel. His name is Dr. Paul testifying from Port Harcourt in Nigeria. Watch this. We'll be right back. What God cannot do does not exist. I'm here to thank God for your life, man of God. You have impacted our lives. The grace of God upon your life has influenced us in our work with God and I give God the glory. I am uh, Dr. Paul. I'm also a minister of God. In my work with God, and presently, and most importantly, recently, we have seen a drastic change in the way we minister and also the way we practice. Glory to God, honor to God for picking a humble man like you to be the head of this team. So I'm proud to be an NSPD at the end. And being a part of NSPD since last year, my wife introduced me uh, to this program. My prayer life has also changed. And not only my prayer life, it has also affected uh, the progress and the manifestations of God that are happening in the ministry. Just like every NSPD, I always give my patients the link uh, when they come to the hospital, some of them don't have um, they don't have Android phones. So what I did is at the waiting room, I converted the uh, the TV uh, and then told the IT experts to help me download some of your prayers. And so people sit down. Those who don't have Android phones, they sit down and watch and pray along with you. So it's been wonderful. A very young woman in her thirties came into the hospital with a swollen abdomen. I mean, when, when she came in, they thought she was pregnant. She was heavily pregnant. She had swollen legs bilaterally. The two legs were swollen. Her, his, her, her face was puffed up. She could not walk. Her blood pressure was about 220 over 140. I mean, it was an emergency. Being an NSPDN, she came in to my office and I saw her. As a doctor, I reviewed her. And I saw that the liver, was enlarged, she had a patomegaly, she had ascites, swollen uh, abdomen, filled with fluid, her legs were swollen. <sighs> and then I told her, do you believe in the power of God? And I always add, what God cannot do, does not. I have to add that miracle word. Once I add a miracle word, I know something supernatural will happen. And then testimonies that look like life will happen. So I have to give the word, word of faith, and that word that is miraculous, I have to release that word and then I will pray along with them. Do you know what happened? After praying with this woman with these whole uh, signs and symptoms and features that she came with, by within less than 12 hours, when she came in the next morning, no one could recognize the woman. No one could say this was a woman we saw yesterday. 
within 12 hours, everything disappeared. Even the, uh, the hepatomegaly, the swollen liver, the big liver disappeared. The swollen legs disappeared. The swollen face disappeared. Her abdomen, the water dried up. The BP came down to about 120, 70. Perfectly normal blood pressure. So we are surprised. What happened? Because if I have to go medically, even if I have to try medically, just like I've done already, I give her medications, which should take at least a week or, or maybe two, two weeks before all these symptoms will, will disappear completely. But this woman, with less than 24 hours, and then she was completely normal. So while I was trying to understand that, within two weeks of that event, another case came in. It was a Muslim, came in with a severe pain on the right flank, uh, right abdomen towards the flank here. I knew probably something related to the liver and um, to the kidney. Then uh, I, sent her, I sent him for an ultrasound scan. It came out that he had about, he had multiple stones, uh, uh, nephrolytic chest, multiple stones on the, on the kidney. This young man cried all night. But when I got there to review me, and uh, I always introduce that, you know that there is nothing God cannot do. And what God cannot do was nice. Do you believe that? He said, yes. He does. Even though he's a Muslim, he said, can I pray with you? He said, he can. And then I pray with him. And I always use that miracle word. What God cannot do does not exist. Once I came back the next morning, I was so interested to know what happened. The mother came to me and said, doctor, doctor, it was not long, about six hours when you left. He passed out three stones into the... Um, I mean, out of his uh, penis. So, wow, three stones. Did you see that? It was in the water system and they could not bring it up and it disintegrated. So wonderful. And then he was fine. He was uh, looking good. He was just happy, uh, sipping his tea. I said, oh, may God be glorified. And while I was doing that, I was sitting in the office. After a while, they told me that he was having excruciating pain again. This time the pain was so much that I knew. And I told him, what, what are you observing? He said he, he knew that there are some there are more stones left and he, he he felt the stones moving down migrating down to his penis so i said this should be the the final part of uh, or the last part of the stones that are uh, lodged in your in your kidney and because he was screaming and shouting i said okay uh, let me quickly refer you so they can see a urologist and then i i wrote a referral letter sent him to the urologist the two teaching hospitals rejected him the family decided they were going home do you know that immediately he got home and stepped his feet at home? The remaining, while he just passed out urine, the remaining two stones came out. <laughs> I said, boy, you have to send me this picture because this is my time to testify of what God is doing in our lives. This is the picture of the other stone. Yeah, I'm sorry because I'm not able to. Can you see that? There's one stone, then the other one. Is, uh, uh, is about disintegrating. It's broken into two now. You can see. Can you see that? Wonderful. So I want to thank God for the grace upon you, man of God. And I pray as a minister and as a doctor, and I believe there are many ministers under this platform, you, your grace is affecting us. Your grace is influencing us. May God keep strengthening you for indeed, what God cannot do does not exist. Oh, wow. oh my God. Wow. This God wow. is rich wow. in mercy. Awesome, awesome God. First off, I'm always so excited when medical doctors testify. <laughs> <laughs> always so exciting when medical doctors, because you know, ah, this one don't pass them. Ah, exactly. you know, they are marvel. They're like, oh, exactly. this is beyond medicine. Exactly. You know, first off. So, um, swollen Levi. You know, he testifies about, you know, two of his patients. The first one, you know, came in over 30, swollen liver, swollen legs, abdomen. can't walk, abdomen. What blood would you say? Very high. Yes, very high blood pressure. What yeah. would you say these symptoms are pointing pointing to? Yeah, as a doctor, I'm thinking that the symptoms are because with that um swollen liver, swollen leg, mm. then hypertension, I'm thinking it may be a hypertensive heart disease. And the, at the point the, the woman came in, she was in heart failure. 
So I'm wow. thinking, yes, hypertensive heart disease with heart failure. Wow, That's what wow, I'm thinking. Wow. That's what I'm thinking. It can also be a kidney problem from hypertension because most times in adults, they can have kidney secondary kidney problem from long-standing hypertension. So wow. it could be somebody that had a long-standing hypertension. At 30 years old. Of course, if mm. she has had long-standing hypertension yes. for maybe since she was a teenager, wow. then up till now, she wow. can also develop a kidney problem. Mm. It can also be a liver problem. Right. Because these are the three major causes, you know, of uh, that kind of a uh, picture that the man was yes. trying to, you yes. know, swollen, the face, swollen yes. legs, swollen abdomen. Mm. But I'm majorly thinking it may be a hypertensive heart disease with heart failure. Yes. Maybe. So Dr. Paul is marveled <laughs> at her recovery. Of course. Who wouldn't be marveled? Mm. He said less than 12 hours. Less than 12 hours after they prayed. Who, who does that? How does it happen? Mm. 12 hours. Mm. When will he even start? In 12, even if you're going to give drugs. No matter the drugs, there are some drugs that we actually use. You know, when you see somebody grossly swollen, it yes. matters. You can say, okay, let me give some of the drugs that will remove the fluid. Mm. Okay, even if you give, it doesn't just go immediately. Yes, it yes. will take some time. Yes. It will take some days. Mm. You will just see it gradually, you know, the size will be reducing until it gradually dries up. Mm. Not 12 hours. So, which means maybe they just saw this woman in the night. In the night and and then, then by, by the morning, morning, they could not recognize the woman. Mm. Who removed the fluid? Hmm. Who, hmm. even if hmm. he gave medication, hmm. who removed the then the blood pressure that was 220 over 140 Normalized. came down to 12070. Very Perfect. normal. Hmm. The hepatomegaly that he saw, a doctor. Hmm. I, I think that's why he's testifying. Yes. I mean, he's, he's, he's <laughs> overwhelmed. He in. knows that hmm. there's no way hmm. medicine will explain it. Is this is definitely not medicine. This is, is not medicine. definitely this not is medicine. This is definitely the strange. Act ah, of God. Oh ah, my ah, God. Ah, ah. It's so amazing. Amazing. It's and, so amazing. And the second patient is testifying about, we've talked about kidney stones yes. before. Yes. Three stones, stones passed out at, at the, the same, same time. time. At the same time. And the even the picture time. he has, we tell you that they are not small, small stones. No, those stones are huge. They are huge. They passed out at the same time. And then he said, you know, because the man was in excruciating pain, he referred him to go see a urologist, a urologist who, for whatever reason, rejected him, only for him to get home. And the two stones that were remaining passed, passed out. out. This is God. Honestly, this is God. Why I'm saying that this is God is that stones that should ordinarily be passed out yes. should be less than five millimeter mm, in mm, diameter. Mm. So Those are huge see, stones. They are huge stones. Huge stones. Huge stones. Mm. And then how come three passed out at, at the, the same, same time? time? I think this God, ah. uh, he has a way of hey. making us know that if he begins a thing, hey. he wants to finish it by himself. He wants to finish because it. Because after the three stones came mm. out, he went into excruciating pain yes, again. Yes, again. And because it was oh. looking unbearable, he said, okay, let me refer you to a urologist. Mm. Then on getting there, maybe they didn't have bed space or whatsoever. So mm. they didn't take him. Mm. So he went home. He went home. On getting home. Ah. That was God at work for ah. me. It was God at work. And mm. that was why they couldn't, the doctors could not take him. And he went home. Then on getting home, the, oh. kid, the remaining stones just dropped on their own. You know, own. these are stones that had been in his kidney for God knows how long. How long? And then six hours after, after they prayed. The prayer, an unbeliever. Oh. A Muslim. Ah. Oh. That yeah. <laughs> this is this, this is God is on fact He said, "I will have mercy ah. on you. I will have mercy." Ah. ah, it's like as the word went forth, he prayed with them. The stones just started marching down from the kidney. They started moving. The, moving he even moving. said it that ah. he could feel. You know, that the, something the was were moving. moving in response and that to was the why he was in so eh? much pain. Oh. Because it was when they left the kidney, entered the ureters, mm. on their way to the bladder, ah. the pain would have been so excruciating. Mm. But you know, when it gets so tough, that is when God, ah. oh my God, ah. I'm blown away hey. by this Even testimony. Even me, I'm blown, it's my colleague that blown testified. Blown away by a, a this colleague. testimony. And look and at the size of those stones. stones. Yes. And then that's an unbeliever. Child. That's an unbeliever that simply just believed. Do you believe you can get healed? Yes, yes I believe. Yes, I believe. And that, and was, that was it. it. As simple that as that. It. As simple as that. Oh, Shadata. That was this it. This is amazing. This is amazing. Amazing. This is awesome. Mm. Within six hours. Within six hours. Of the prayer. No need for surgery anymore. No need for surgery. 
Ha, where will you even start? Is mm. the surgery an easy one? Mm. It's not an easy one now. Are you mm. talking about the laser surgery or are you talking about open laparotomy? Mm. Which one? Ah. I mean, ah. it's just God. Ah. Averting, you know, ah. the, not using your money to service negativity. Yes. Because where would they even start? Where do they start from? Ah, this is phenomenal. This, this is, is phenomenal. phenomenal. I'm so excited about this excited. testimony. I'm so excited that it's my colleague. Yes. You know, that just shared this testimony. Yes. I'm so excited at what God is doing. Yes, yes. Rubbishing medicine. Rubbishing oh on every God. level. Can you imagine what a phenomenal lineup we've had today? Starting from the breast lumps. 12 breast, breast lumps. Breast lumps disappearing. disappearing. Then to kidney failure. To kidney failure, being, you know, she recovered without, you know, without any kind of dialysis no whatsoever. No intervention, mm. just like that. Mm. Then, then to, now, a two-part testimony. Yeah, so the first one was just the Just one with severe hypertension, mm -hmm. with the liver, mm -hmm. disappear within 12 hours. Everything. Mm. And then kidney mm. stone mm. within six hours. Mm. Everything Five of fell them. Off. Dropped out dropped on out. their own. On their own. Ah. Huge stones. Very hey. nice stones. It can only be God, God is awesome. I'm so excited. God is awesome. I'm so excited. God, God is, is awesome. awesome. And what he cannot do does not, not exist. exist. Does not exist. Oh Thank you so much, Pastor Chika. You brought so much insight to these testimonies. We're about Thank to wrap you. up. Can you say something to our audience before ah, we go? To our audience, what more can I say? You've heard <laughs> the testimony by yourself. What is it that you're believing God? Yes. Yeah. That first testimony, you know, she said she kept on believing. Yes. She kept on believing. Her testimony did not come immediately. It did not. But she stayed on the mm. altar of fire. Mm. And even when it happened, she did not know. Mm. You will not know when your own will happen. Amen. That thing that you're believing God for, you will not know when it will happen. Amen. Just continue to stay at the fire altar. Yes. God will do it. Yes. And your own is the nest that will be testified about amen amen mm. amen amen having heard these testimonies having reviewed these testimonies i have nothing more to say than what god cannot, cannot do does not, does not exist. exist what he cannot do does not exist Nothing. there is no reason to not be on the altar of fire i mean it's not just medical testimonies is healings i mean in the past week we saw babies marriages jobs resident permits visas it's not just healing you know problems present past and you know the ones to come god yes. is sorting he's rearranging he's fixing a multitude of issues on the altar of fire and that's why you cannot afford to be absent monday to friday 7 a.m nigerian time nsppd continues you need to come back and please do not come back alone the strange acts of god will continue saturday morning 7 a.m nigerian time Please come back and join us. Do you have a testimony? Send in your testimony to our testimony lines written at the bottom of the screen. Wow, an amazing, amazing time we've had today. Yes, Pastor so. Chika, thank you yet again for thank joining you. us. My pleasure. We look yes. forward to having you back again and again. Oh. <laughs> yes, you yes. come back again I'm and coming again. Back. Thank it's you. a promise. Yes, I'm yes, coming yes, back. yes. We are going to hold you up to that one. <laughs> thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so, so much. our amazing viewers, click on the share button if you are yet to. Thank you so much for watching today. Till next week, Saturday, remember, what God cannot do does not, does not exist. exist.